In this HVAC training video, I'm going over how to check the refrigerant charge on this R454B air conditioning system and how to add the R454B into the unit because it's a little bit low on refrigerant. We're gonna be using the NAVAC digital manifold gauge set and I'm gonna be showing you the step-by-step -step process of how to connect this, the air purging process, checking the refrigerant charge and how to add refrigerant step-by-step. -step. And remember, if you wanna learn about HVAC, make sure to check out our new second edition refrigerant charging and service procedures for air conditioning book. So if you wanna learn about charging scenarios and uh, pressure testing, leak checking, vacuuming, recovery, airflow measurements, and a lot more, make sure to check out our new second edition refrigerant charging book and also our workbook. So this has a self-study answer key so you can check your knowledge as you grow. Now, before we just go ahead and connect in, I wanna turn on our temperature clamps. So this is for our high side. And so I'm just gonna actually move these out of the way for now and turn this one on as well. You're gonna see the temperature is gonna get displayed right here on the digital manifold. So right now it says 87.8, 88.3. So that's the temperature it is outside and inside the building. It's about 76 degrees and 70 degree wet bulb temperature. So it's pretty hot, there's a high heat load inside the building. And so I just also wanna point out that uh, when you are transporting a manifold and hoses, you wanna have these all snug. You don't want hot, humid air getting in there. Uh, but what we're gonna do here is we're gonna do the air purging process. And so we're going to, to shut this one right here and we're going to open up uh, this line right here, and we're gonna connect this in. And so we're gonna disconnect our port caps. Disconnect this one right here. If you are trying to connect in while the unit is running, this uh, will be low in temperature and it'll attract all the humidity in there and even on the inside. So if you take the caps off while the system is running and you're trying to connect in, you need to do it quickly so that you don't get uh, basically water condensing on the inside of here. Uh, the other thing is I did check the airflow on this system and the airflow is right about 790 CFMs. And so you always wanna check the airflow before charging. And so on this unit, you see 24,000 BTUs. So it's 12,000 BTUs per ton. That makes us a two ton unit and you need around 400 CFMs of airflow. That's 400 cubic feet per minute of airflow per 12,000 BTUs. So we need around 800 CFM. We have about 790, which we checked earlier with our TEC true flow grid. And so we know we're good there. All right. So I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to open up our low pressure side. I'm going to take this off because we need to go ahead and purge, purge the air. I want to make sure that all of our connections are snug right here. We're leaving this open because as we connect in, we're gonna allow the refrigerant pressure to push the air out of here. So you can hear by that audible noise. So now that has been purged. And we're gonna turn that off. We also don't wanna allow any uh, dirt or debris to enter right in here. And so we just wanna be careful with that. Now, I'm gonna reposition my body here because with the camera, it makes it a little bit difficult, but basically I need to get this hose over to the other side and connect it in. So now we know that we have all refrigerant in the hoses and we don't have air that's gonna contaminate the refrigerant charge of this new unit. For now, I'm gonna hook this yellow hose right here just in case I was to accidentally bump this. I'm gonna also turn this off so we wanna make sure that our manifold is off before turning power on to the disconnect. And so we have our disconnect in the off position right now. And so our manifold is off. We have our manual low loss valves in the open position. And now we're gonna connect our temperature clamps. And so right here, you can see that you can, you can read it on the display by pressing the button, but we just are gonna monitor it right here. You're also gonna notice that there is a, a temperature sensor there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna clean the surface of the tube with non-soaped steel wool, just to get any uh, sediment right off the surface there so we can get an accurate temperature measurement. So right there, we're gonna do the same for the other side. And this one, 
has our red button, so we know that that's the high side. So this is the high pressure side, and this is the low pressure side. So the low pressure side is over here, it's the large line. So low pressure, large line, vapor. And so that's all together. We have our high pressure line. That's the small liquid line, and that's red. Now we're ready to turn our power on. Our indoor thermostat is in cooling mode, and the temperature is set down really low, so it won't shut off on us while we're measuring the refrigerant charge. So really, we want to give this about five to 10 minutes for the refrigerant to circulate through the system. Our indoor airflow is set on cooling speed and our airflow is correct. We check that before even bothering connecting our refrigerant pressures because airflow is just as important as refrigerant. And this system is equipped with a thermostatic expansion valve, which means that we're going to be checking the refrigerant charge with the subcooling method on the high side. Now that does not mean that we are not gonna pay attention to the low side at all because the reality of it is you can do some troubleshooting as well. We can make sure that the TXV is doing its job properly by monitoring what's called total superheat and that is right down here. So that's presently 15.5 degrees. So we do need to allow this system to circulate and for the thermostatic expansion valve to do its job properly its job is to meter refrigerant to the indoor coil. And so it has to allow enough refrigerant in to absorb the heat within the air crossing over the outside of the indoor coil. And so the heat load consists of water vapor and just heat in general from the air. And so it also needs to make sure that it's not gonna dump too much refrigerant in. And that's what we can check right here. We can check to make sure that it's not putting too much refrigerant in. So we always wanna pay attention to our low pressure side. Now discuss that as we, as we move forward here. So the other thing is I just wanna point out, just because this service valve is sweating, uh, you know, you have water vapor from the outside condensing on it, that does not mean it has an accurate refrigerant charge. You, what you really need to do is look at the target subcooling up on the rating plate. And so this outdoor unit has one target subcooling rating and it's five degrees. And so subcooling is listed right here. Presently it's 2.1, uh, but we do have to give it time to circulate for the TXV to have a solid column of liquid and continue to uh, put that into the coil. So let's just take a look at this for a sec. Uh, I, I don't know if you noticed, but before we even connect it in, we had R454B selected on this manifold. And so you could select uh, a variety, a, a bunch of different refrigerants, but what happens is when you select that, it's gonna automatically convert this pressure here on the high pressure side on this small liquid line. It's gonna convert that to the saturated temperature in the middle of the outdoor coil. And so the refrigerant is doing what's called a phase change. It's changing from vapor to liquid in this outdoor coil. And then after that, after it's fully in the liquid state, it's then gonna be lowering in temperature and that's what's called the subcooling. It's the temperature decrease of the liquid flowing through the outdoor coil. And so this 93.3 degrees is gonna be basically, say two thirds of the entire coil is gonna be at that temperature. And so that temperature is gonna be hotter than the outdoor air crossing over it. So the outdoor coil's job is to reject the heat the indoor coil's job is to absorb the heat. It's absorbing the heat from the air into the refrigerant. The refrigerant is getting transported back through this low pressure line to the outdoor unit. And then it's going through the compressor into the, into the coil. And then it's a high pressure vapor as it enters. And then it's doing a phase change. So it's locked at that 93 degrees as it's flowing through the coil. And it's rejecting heat to the outdoor air. So the refrigerant has to exchange enough heat to change into a completely liquid state. And then after that, it's gonna to continue to flow through the coil in the, in the outdoor unit. It's gonna make multiple passes and it's gonna lower in temperature. And so saturated temperature is 93.5. The liquid line temperature as it's exiting, exiting the outdoor unit is 90.3. So we have about three degrees of subcooling. We need to be within plus or minus three degrees of the target subcooling. And so the target subcooling is five. Now we're a little bit low. We're not crazy low, we're just a little bit low. 
We're not gonna have to add a, a whole lot of refrigerant, but we are gonna add just a little bit. We're just gonna continue to let this circulate for a second. I wanna explain this side right here. That's your, your low pressure side. And so presently, the saturated temperature at the indoor coil is 50.5 degrees. And that's a little bit high because of the heat load crossing that indoor coil is high. And so we have the refrigerant flowing through the indoor coil at 50.7 degrees. The line temperature out here, where it's increased in vapor temperature, that's called the superheat. It's the increase in, in vapor refrigerant's temperature. So it's 61.8 degrees right here. So you take 61.8 minus the saturated temperature, and that's 50 degrees. We have a total superheat of about 12 degrees. Just so we're all aware, a TXV's job is to maintain a superheat across the indoor coil of about eight to 12 degrees. You may measure it here as a total superheat because we're far away from the indoor coil, but you may measure anywhere between say six to say, 15 degrees of total superheat and the TXV is still doing its job properly as long as it has some subcooling. If you're so low on refrigerant that you're like at say zero or 0.5 or something like that, your superheat may be high because you're not getting a full, full solid calm of liquid entering into the TXV. So it can't do its job properly because it doesn't have enough refrigerant yet. So anyway, it is working properly, right? It's at 11.5, that's within eight to 12. It's certainly within say six to 15 degrees of total superheat, so we're good there. I just want to point this out that on the high side, to find the subcooling, it's the saturated temperature in the middle of the outdoor coil minus the line temperature. So it's three degrees for subcooling. Total superheat is actually the line temperature minus the saturated temperature, so it's, it's reversed. And so you can see that that's 11.3. Okay, let's get our scale out and our bottle. So you can see that our total superheat is a little high, and that's because our subcooling is, is a little bit low. It keeps bouncing back and forth down here. And so we're gonna add a little bit of our 454B refrigerant. And so we're, we're gonna add this left hand to right hand thread adapter. And then we're gonna attach our yellow hose right here onto the bottle. And we're gonna purge the air out right here. So we're just gonna purge this little bit of air. That's it. Now you want to make sure to not unscrew the left hand to right hand thread adapter because this is uh, right handed. And so we're going to also make sure that these are in the off position. We're going to open up our bottle. I want to see, make sure that you can see this. And I'm going to put that onto our scale. I'm going to zero the scale out. And then we're gonna add a little bit of refrigerant. So, so far we added 1.6 ounces. So you wanna give that a little bit of time in order to circulate through the system, in order to end up having uh, the pressure stabilize. We're gonna add just a little bit more and then we're gonna give it a little bit of time. And you only wanna add a little bit of refrigerant at a time uh, because you don't want the compressor slugging uh, with liquid. So the refrigerant has to exit out of the bottom of this tank because it has to come out as a liquid. It's a mix of both R32 and R1234YF. And so it's important that the composition stays the same, stays accurate. And so as you're adding this in, it's, it's in liquid form, it's coming this way, and then you're just metering it a little at a time into the blue hose and into the system. Okay, we're gonna add a little bit more refrigerant. It's also important to note that you don't wanna have uh, the hoses changing their position while you're weighing the refrigerant in because it's gonna throw off your, your numbers here. Okay, so now we're up to almost five, but we're gonna be fluctuating back and forth here a little bit, looks like. So 
we're at four ounces. I'm gonna let that sit for a little bit and then we'll check back afterwards. We're looking uh, like we're right where we need to be for our target subcoiling. Might wanna be just, just slightly higher than what it's calling for, but right around that number. So if our target subcoiling is five on the, on the rating plate and we are at five, then we should be good to go. What I do like to let it set at is maybe say 5.5 to six if the target is five. I just like to give it just a little bit extra, um, but uh, I want to see our total superheat go down a little bit as well uh, with a thermostatic expansion valve now that we actually have some liquid uh, traveling to the TXV. Okay, so we waited a little bit. The superheat did come down and uh, we're at about 5.3 degrees. So what I want to do is I want to shut this bottle and I'm going to shut this as well just so that we don't accidentally uh, hit the uh, left hand to uh, right hand thread adapter. Just gonna disconnect. So what we would normally do is we would sh uh, basically pull the high side, which is back here. So we're measuring 5.7. So I'm gonna show you that. So we're gonna disconnect back here. I wanna point out that we have a saturated temperature on the liquid line of about 96 degrees and a line temp of 90 degrees. And so we have about six degrees of subcooling, which is very close to our five degree target. So we are correctly charged. If anything, we're just slightly, slightly over, but, but we are good because we're within plus or minus three degrees of our target. So I turned the manual on off valve into the off position. And then we disconnect right there, just like that. If we want to charge the refrigerant from the red hose and the yellow hose back into the system again, we can do so a little at a time. Now, because this high side is detached, we can basically just open up and connect the red to yellow hose. Now we did add a decent amount of refrigerant in there and we're just slightly higher than what our target is. So I just want to show you what would happen, but basically, you're just going to add a little in at a time and we don't want to add too much. We really don't because we're going to accidentally overcharge this system if we do that. So uh, in this case, we, we added the correct amount slightly over. I don't want to overcharge it. So I'm just going to disconnect from this system. Uh, but if we were to able to basically stop charging ahead of time, then what we could do is we could just charge this refrigerant completely into the low side until this gauge pressure is the same as this gauge pressure in order to basically only have vapor left in the hoses. But in this case, I don't want to accidentally overcharge the system. And so I'm going to go ahead and uh, shut this and we're going to go ahead and disconnect right here as well. Now, in reference to this, I don't want to allow any uh, condensation to occur on the inside. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to temporarily put a cap there. So I'll just put that right here, just temporarily. We're going to actually leak check these ports on this system. Um, we're going to check to make sure that the Schrader valve has reseated. Any refrigerant in the hoses can be purged uh, unless there's a way to recover that refrigerant. And so right now we're just leak checking at the ports. So what I did is I temporarily put a port cap on there that has a hole right in the middle. And I added non-corrosive bubble leak detector onto that joint in order to see if it's gonna blow any bubbles. And that would tell me that the valve core, also known as a Schrader valve, has not reseated, but it looks like it is holding, so we are good. And I'm gonna go ahead and put the regular caps back on. If you're required to put on locking caps, make sure to do that. And now I'm gonna just do the same thing on the other side and just leak check that. It looks like we're good on this side too. It's not blowing any bubbles, so we can go ahead and put our caps on. And so I hope this video has helped you understand charging methods using a digital manifold and our 454B refrigerant. If you want to learn more about HVAC, make sure to check out our new second edition, Refrigerant Charging and Service Procedures for Air Conditioning book, and also our 1600 question workbook. So we have these books available over at acservicetech.com, True Tech Tools, and over on Amazon. Hope you enjoyed yourself. We'll see you next time at AC Service Tech Channel.